Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start our meeting, our 153rd meeting plenary session of the Committee of the Regions. Before we start our work, there is something I would like to share with you. The news reaching us from Turkey and Syria following the earthquake on Monday are tragic and heartbreaking. It is estimated that thousands of people were affected by this event, including, unfortunately, many dead and injured. It is times like this that more than testing the ability to provide assistance between regions and states do truly put to the test the, bas the basic values of solidarity, mutual aid, and humanity. On behalf of the European Committee of the Regions, I had already the opportunity to express the condolences and the solidarity to the people of Turkey and Syria for this tragic event. After the destruction caused by nature, may men and women now be able, with hope and humanity, to build a better future for the populations that survived this terrible event. Dear members, I would, I would like now to invite you to join me in a minute of silence for the victims of this earthquake and in a demonstration of solidarity for all those involved in the rescue operations. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to proceed. We have point number one of our meeting. If there is no objection or comments, the agenda is adopted. Point number two, if there is no objection, the minutes of our 152nd meeting are approved, adopted. I'm point number three, three of our agenda. Dear colleagues, dear members, I am very pleased and honored to welcome you today to this uh, session that, as you all know, was, was supposed to take place in the room and of the plenary of the European Parliament, but considering extraordinary and unforeseen circumstances takes place in this uh, venue. I would like on behalf of the Committee of the Regions to express our gratitude to the European Parliament and to the services both of the Parliament and of the Committee of the Regions for all their work to have us here in this, um, in this uh, venue. Now we move to point four of our agenda. We have a debate on the role of local and regional authorities for the digital uh, age. It's my honor and pleasure to welcome Madam Vice President, Executive Vice President of the European Commission for a Europe Fit for the Digital Age, and Margaret Vestager. It's a pleasure to have you here with us in our meeting. Thank you so much for having accepted uh, our invitation. The Committee of the Regions has played a major role 
in recent years in ensuring the EU digital agenda becomes a reality also at local and regional level. So we look forward to discussing with you the various aspects of the digital agenda from a local and regional uh, perspective this afternoon. Without further delay, it's my pleasure to give the floor to the Executive Vice President Vestager for 10 minutes. You have the floor, madam. Well, thank you very much, uh, President, uh, honorable uh, members, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to uh, have this debate. These are extraordinary times, as, as we just marked, uh, also with sorrow or sadness for lives being lost. Uh, and while we are speaking, uh, the war in Ukraine is soon to have its very sad one-year uh, marking. In, in Ukraine, they are fighting for European values. The European flag was the one that was crowning the revolution of the Maidan Square. The commission was just there to a commission to government meeting. And one might believe that this is the most important thing to do to fight the war. But you do that in so many levels. And the interesting thing is that other than their incredible determination, their courage, they also keep using digital technology for their country to function. On the most amazing level, I think they are far more digitalized than most European countries. The things you can do with the state in an app, uh, DIA as it's called, just to give you one example, uh, the suggestion is that if you uh, change light bulbs in Ukraine to LED uh, light bulbs, you can save up to 10% of energy use, which is really, really important in the situation that they're in. So in the app, you can say, this is where I live. This is the closest post office. I would like to have this kind of new light bulbs. And you press, and a few days after, you can pick up your light bulbs in the post office of your preference. So very close to the individual citizen in Ukraine, in a situation of war, they press on with using digital tools to make the best for the citizens. The second thing that is, of course, the responsibility of our generation is to fight climate change. There is war, yes, but you cannot fight for the uh, uh, negotiate with the planet to please put climate change on hold until we have won the war. Not possible. So we need, of course, to push on. And also here, the use of digital tools is absolutely of the essence. For instance, to enable citizens to see what is the water level of uh, nearby uh, lakes uh, and rivers. Or for people to follow how they are doing with recycling. So from the all global encompassing uh, climate change, to the individual citizen, digital tools can make the connection and make you see that this is part of your life, that you are part of the fight against climate change. And in the geopolitics that we live in, probably it cannot be more important how we use digital tools. I uh, have the responsibility of making Europe fit for the digital age. I had to get my head around that title because actually I do think that the task is to make sure that we use technology in the best possible way, not that we fit the human in a certain shape or form that is fit for technology. And uh, the most fundamental choice that we have made is also the most simple one, that technology is about people. It is the human being in the center the integrity, the respects of every individual, that is the driving force. And this is what you see in our digital decade uh, targets that we have translated into a digital decade policy program. <coughs> you also see it in the Declaration on Digital Rights and Principles that the Council, the Parliament uh, and the European Commission 
signed in December in order to show that you as a citizen uh, in this digital transformation that you have rights. We have set uh, objective uh, targets for 2030 and none of those targets will just happen by themselves. They will only happen when we take action positively to enable change. For instance, the obvious thing that you can identify yourself, not with your Facebook login, not with your Google account, but with the identity that has been provided for you, just like a passport has been provided for you. So that it's not a commercial thing that you can present yourself as who you are. And we would want uh, every union citizen to have access to a secure digital uh, ID at the latest by 2030. And as you hopefully agree with me, uh, regions and local communities have a key role to play in making the best use of technology. Because uh, regions and local communities, well, they are as close to uh, citizens as one can come. And this is also why we think that when member states uh, do their national roadmaps for the digital decade, how to get there with the digitization of public services, how to help businesses to rethink their business model to use the most, uh, make the most of digital technology, how to get the infrastructure right, and how to make sure that everyone is skilled well, member states should not do that without active consulting regions and local communities because that, of course, makes it much more likely that it will actually uh, work. Outside of the Digital Decade Policy Program, uh, and some funding comes with it, uh, of course, the cohesion policy, uh, the funding uh, that it provides uh, is there to enable, again, the best use of digital uh, technology. And the thing is that where we are right now, we have a risk of enforcing, uh, increasing a digital divide if we not very specifically address us that this is what we want to avoid. My guess is that probably 80% of people, they will say, this is nice. It makes my life easier. I don't have to wait in queues. I don't have to um, go to a specific, specific, specific place. It makes my life easy. And then probably you have 20% who say, no, I don't know. Is this safe? Or can I do this? And of course, the task is to make sure that everyone feels that they are on board. And also that no one is excluded because of lack of connectivity or the lack of offer to get the skills needed actually to come on board. And uh, this is why we have these different uh, initiatives, like the European Urban uh, Initiative, set up in September last year. Uh, what we do here is to uh, test new solutions to foster digital governance, to improve uh, digital uh, public services. Or we have the Living in .eu movement set up by cities in 2019, uh, nearly 140 signatories and 130 supporters today. Because cities, villages, regions, they can make the real uh, difference. And last but not least, these are very practical things to do. From the principles of people first, of the integrity and the respect of the individual in the center, there's a lot of practical things to get done. For instance, that different systems can speak with one another. Uh, we launched uh, late uh, last year a proposal called Interoperable Europe, where we want to set up a board uh, with representatives also from this uh, committee in order to make sure that we have a forum where we can enforce that it's not a choice that technology should speak with each other. It's an obligation that technology should speak with each other. Because otherwise, we are left where we were stranded. And that, I think, is a very important point. That we will leave uh, no one stranded 
when it comes to technology. The last thing that uh, I think is mind-boggling for everyone is, of course, how to make sure that it's all safe. Because we see the benefits of digital technology in our hospitals, in our schools, in fighting climate change, in having ease with public services, in paying our taxes, in paying for whatever we buy, and eradicating um, corruption and, uh, and on VAT uh, work. For all these positive things to be harvested, it needs to be safe. Because already today, we have seen the devastating effects of cyber attacks for hospitals, telecommunication, our railroads. And uh, for the next uh, year or so, new obligations will come into force uh, with the vision of the NIS2 directive. And I think that is one of the important reassurances that you should also be able to give. That yes, we want to use these technologies, but we will only use them when we can guarantee that it is safe. And this is just to say that if we are to be successful in this use of technology, this is not a task for the Commission. It's not a task for Member States. It's a task for every one of us in order to make sure that our objectives, which is not to fit the human in a digital uh, shape, but for every one of us to make the most of the technologies that are so promising. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice President. Now we, we're going to proceed to give the floor to the political groups of uh, the Committee of the Regions. And uh, I now give the floor for two minutes to our member, Marku Markula. You have the floor, two minutes. Uh, first of all, thank you, thank you, uh, Madam Vestager. So impressive uh, work that you've been doing uh, in your role by integrating different policy sectors together and seeing the crucial role of digitalization. That's what we want to stress on behalf of the EPP especially. But let me try to be a bit more concrete because on all of this work we need to start so our major EU target as well implementing sustainable development goals. And everything on that. Uh, we cannot get that done without digitalization. Green and digital, they go hand in hand. And that's good in the recent uh, EU policy especially. I want to stress that heavily. And we have taken that in most of the EU regions practically on our regional kind of umbrella are the SDGs and how to move on. And let me just highlight, because I want to show to you as well, we did uh, with the Helsinki region, capital region, a special report how we are and will be more forerunner in implementing the innovation agenda. But all this is related on what you exactly said. So we start out with first of our key messages that we implement green and digital transition, and we will be carbon neutral by 2030. The whole region, hundreds of square kilometers of uh, cities, smaller towns, and the countryside, forests, and the Baltic Sea. So we have an ambitious plan, and how we want to reach that, we start with more investments in research and development to true uh, and get through them more innovation. That is especially driven and investment by private sector, because they are drivers, and on that, so we cannot rely on public sector, national capital investments on R&D only, but we need, again, go hand in hand. And our regional targets is no less than reach the level of 5% uh, on GDP, and that's where the digitalization makes a lot of sense. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now the floor goes to member Thomas Schmidt for two minutes. Thank you very much, um, Vice President. President, thank you. The network world that we live in offers us new chances, new opportunities, but new dangers as well, something we've realized in Saxon. We've uh, faced two significant cyber attacks on the university in uh, Freiburg and the technical college in Zwickau. People are aware of this danger and um, they're worried. 
So it's good that the Commission is picking up the issue of di uh, digital resilience. Um, it's good to see it on the agenda. Uh, for us from the regions, I think two things are important. Um, firstly, we need to create the necessary preconditions for a digital network. Um, digital cohesion um, is important throughout Europe, and it's important to develop that in the regions. Uh, that's a fundamental thing. Secondly, the multifaceted aspects need to be brought together from the very start. Um, if the initiatives uh, at the European level, they need to be supplemented, um, and they need to work together with markets and services um, to allow the possibility of provision of um, digital services to uh, citizens so that they can have easy access with the um, chip laws. We can um, look at the question of uh, raw materials, uh, particularly with regard to semiconductors, and for a law for an interoperable Europe, that which we're looking at in the Econ Committee next week, uh, we'll be looking at cross-border digital provision of services. So uh, there's a lot already being done, uh, but we can't let up in our pace. It's very important this remain at the top of our priorities. Thank you. Thank you. Now the floor goes to Member Concepcion Andreu Rodriguez. You have the floor for four minutes. Thank you very much, Jim. Vice President of the Commission, thank you very much for the leadership you've been providing on this uh, issue. I'm from one of the northern regions of Spain, La Rioja. And it's also my honour to be the Deputy Chair of the Socialist Group in the Committee of the Regions. My group's firm belief is that the digital transition must leave no one and no territory behind, as you quite rightly stressed when you took the floor. The digital development must be of benefit to the whole of our citizenship, regardless of how far away the place they live may be. Our group has called for the digital dimension to be built into the general considerations governing territorial cohesion. Now, re returning the focus to La Rioja, it's a region with a population of 317,000 people. It accounts for 0.66% of the total population of Spain. Just 0.66% of the population. But thanks to our size, we are a good region when it comes to running pilot projects. They will have impacts that are easy to, to gauge with a significant impact. Just a couple of very quick examples. We're a territory where we deliver digital services. The Agora program focuses on the complete renovation of digital management and electronic registers. I'm glad to say that this has been funded by European funds with a 100% guarantee for the administrative procedures which can be carried out online wherever you are in the region. And the second project I'd like to mention is the Valley of the Language, or Language Valley. That's set out in the strategic project of the Spanish government, dubbed the new language economy. This is a, a range of educational, cultural, linguistic and research programmes, but the, the top um, priority here is applying artificial in, intelligence to natural language. The government of La Rioja wants our territory, where the most ancient texts in the Spanish language were found, to be on the leading edge, leading edge of the language economy. Now, this this new stage in language knowledge, as I was saying, revolves around artificial intelligence, and it's a real industrial revolution with great business opportunities inherent in it. So, our purpose is to convert La Rioja into an area where we will be able to roll out all these innovative technological experimental proposals which will help speed up economic and social development of our region. On top of that, 
as a result of this, the, the same could apply to all those regions where the, the findings of our pilot project could be applied. We can fight the, the loss of population thanks to digitalization. In the process, promoting equality between rural and urban areas. At the same time, we're, we're supporting the, the Commission's Green in Industration Programme. La Rioja shares the same goals. We have to uphold social rights too, and the rights of workers, in a wide context, with environmental sustainability and social sustainability going together. And this is very much in line with the priorities of the socialist group, I should add. Thank you. Host to member Martin van Grutusen, you have the floor, three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, first of all, on behalf of the Renew Group at the EU Committee of the Regions. I would like to thank Executive Vice President, Mrs. Vestager, for her statement and her efforts to make Europe really fit for the digital age. The EU, EU digital goals for 2030 will help European regions and cities to become digital resilient. And the EU framework with regulations will help to create a trustworthy, human-centered digital environment. And in my own region, the Dutch province of North Brabant, where, among others, ASML company with its unique chip machine is located near the city of Eindhoven, we feel responsible and we feel responsibility to lead and prioritize and invest in the digital transformation. And for me and my colleagues, digitalization is chefsache. As a regional public administration, we are proud to say that we are ISO certificate with a chief information office and a chief information security officer. And we pay close attention to the implementation of the NIS 2 directive. And in addition, the grand initiative, Jordanus Academy of Data Science in the city of Sertogenbos, is a unique knowledge institute in my own region. And as a region, we invest in the so-called data labs, where data is not only about monitoring, but it is also about predicting value and impact. And the goal is to get more out of data so that we can improve our regional policies. We are therefore looking forward to the upcoming European data spaces. And we need to keep working on the conscious awareness of cybersecurity. Related to upcoming acts like the AI Act, for example, it is important to keep an eye on the target audience to create real trust among people. And if there is a good fundament, we can really enjoy the opportunities like Ms. the Vice President mentioned, of data sharing and new technologies. And we also highlight this during our annual National Data Week in the city of Sertogenbos in my region and organized by the city of Den Bosch and several other private partners. And I would like to invite Mrs. Vestager to be part of the next uh, uh, um, edition in this interesting week to see and hear and look and feel about innovative ideas on data use. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now the floor goes to member Marco Marsilio for two and a half minutes. Grazie, Presidente. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Commission. Geopolitical instability generated by Russia's war in Ukraine has left Europe facing its own weaknesses. That applies to the Union's digital policy, too. Investing in our responsibility to design our agenda to ensure our digital sovereignty. A recent study from the Committee on Digital Concerns shows how vulnerable we are to cyber attacks. There could be a digital pandemic having a, a very serious impact on public administration and the public. Local and regional authorities need to enhance their digital resilience. So it's a matter of urgency to set out a course of action for digitalising the European Union in, with the possibility of complementary funding, of avoiding overlap between the member states and the, the European level, which would be wasteful. Europe needs to be better prepared and carry out more resilience tests on its digital infrastructures. It, it must invest in safe digitalization, increasing links amongst the member states in such a way that will optimize the use of public services with significant economic benefits for all businesses too. 
enhancing interoperability in the public sector will help build up a strategic political independence in Europe. Improving the provision of services to citizens online also creates new business opportunities for technology firms in the various member states. Bringing in the private sector will allow us to to try out differing approaches in different uh, territories. I must comment, uh, Commissioner, on the Commission's proposal last week on moving state aids. Now, of course, there's a need to s support firms in a difficult position in strategic sectors. Uh, in, in the light of the measures taken by the United States, we must nonetheless uh, prevent any risk to the single market with certain member states being able to afford state aids that others would not be able to. We need a level playing field for everyone without undermining Europe's political competitiveness. For two minutes. <clears throat> dear Commissioner, dear colleagues, research and innovation are key enablers for sustainable economic growth and the creation of jobs. The, we in the European Alliance Group fully believe that a flexible, a future-proof regulatory framework for digital innovation is necessary to address challenges and opportunities flowing from the rise of industry. We believe it is important to remove barriers which businesses and local regional authorities currently face when investing in digitalization. <laughs> Uh, for example, in the field of artificial intelligence, big data, cyber security, digital services. This is very common to say, but how to translate to the real life? Digital literacy needs to be improved across Europe, and the digital and technological divide between urban, rural, and remote areas should be reduced. And don't forget, human side cannot be ignored, for instance, in public administration. It is not possible to save on people due to computer, computerization in human services. Apps cannot substitute men. And let's speak about the Green Deal. Technology can improve energy and resource efficiency, facilitate the circular economy, lead to a better allocation of resources, reduce emissions, pollution, biodiversity loss, and environmental degradation. Uh, if well-managed digital technologies have also, also been a driving force behind democratization, citizen expression, and social projects, pro pro progress. And don't forget once more the human side. Thank you. Thank you. Now the floor goes to Member Josef Frey for two minutes. The President, uh, the Vice President, Vice President, colleagues. The EU has set ambitious uh, goals for digitalization and climate protection and for the Greens it's important that both of these uh, objectives be uh, pursued together. Digital solutions uh, should uh, help climate protection because if we don't solve the problem of the climate we won't need digitalization. So we're talking about a double green and digital uh, transition. so that in future the, we can combine uh, the uh, production and the use of electricity for digital vehicles and for other purposes. We need to be digitally competitive in the uh, European Union and we need to be attractive to businesses from this point of view. Worldwide uh, competition needs to be taken into account, in particular in Asia and the USA. There is less uh, competition within the EU. Uh, it's not really so much about that, but it's more about competing with third countries than within the EU. So, and resilience is a key word here. We need a more efficient solar panel production uh, within the EU. And another example is that we could use digitalization uh, to improve our circular economy. Um, we need to uh, give uh, leading regions in uh, this assistance because they can lead the way for other European regions. 
With that in mind, I welcome the proposals, recent proposals of the Commission for a Green Deal industry plan. The strong, innovative uh, regions uh, need to attract uh, new uh, businesses and be very competitive in this. Thank you. Now the call goes to Paula Fernandez Viana for one minute. Muchísimas gracias, Presidente. Thank you very much. The government of Cantabria is committed to fighting depopulation and giving the peoples of these areas services which exist in cities. Now, it's very difficult to try and attract new neighbours to our regions if we do not offer them a high-quality internet connection. This isn't a luxury. It's an absolute need. The lack of quality networks that enable digital services or um, the use of digital uh, mobile telephones um, is a serious problem. And it also makes uh, a decent education very difficult. It uh, deprives people of the possibility to work. Those looking for employment in uh, the rural areas need a good network. Digital fibres, uh, 5G, will attract populations to our to our regions. Better using technology um, can also be used in agriculture and livestock. We are running a program, Connect Cantabria, starting from March 2019, which enables us to increase cover. One minute. Dovolte mi poďakovať pani podpredsedničke Vestager za podporu kľúčovej iniciatívy, ktorá zabezpečí nielen... The initiative uh, will lead to technological progress and more, uh, offer more possibilities to our citizens. In Košice, we're focusing uh, on that. We have the... We've just celebrated the birthday of our in new innovation centre, the first birthday. We're talking about innovation in our area uh, at this event, and that all uh, showed that we're a region that pays a lot of attention to these issues. And for that reason, in the last 10 years, we have uh, seen a growth in the IT sector. And, we've, and it's become the second most important uh, sector in our region. It's important to us that we work together with European institutions and that we use financial assistance to uh, foster uh, these aims. Thank you, Chairman. In the Murcia region, we think that the challenges of the digital age require investment and adequate training of highly qualified staff who will have a grasp of the new technologies which have in in an increasing uh, impact on the services local authorities provide to citizens. It's hard to fight for, for talent in a market which, after the pandemic, has seen labour costs shooting up. That's particularly relevant when you're talking about cyber security. In, to, taken together with recent cyber attacks, firms and administrations have been under constant attack. If we're to be ready to fend off those attacks, attacks, we have to have massive investment and ensure we have interoperability amongst the various administrations. If the cyber security centres are interoperable, we'll be better able to serve businesses and the administration. In that way, we can make the best use of public resources and rise to the, the cyber security challenges. Thank you for the floor, Mr. President. Good and important that we talk about digital resilience of local and regional governments today in this session. Digital infrastructure is vital and must be protected. Good that in Europe, that Europe has taken the lead. I want to appreciate the Commissioner's emphasis of leaving nobody stranded when it comes to this. I think that's the true core of true resilience. If we leave our citizens behind, they cannot adapt. We will never have true resilience and data and technology security. The basic needs to be in order, but digital resilience is more than that and needs a multi-dimensional multi approach. Um, in, our, in our city, Sato Humbos, we are uh, having diff different labs to make sure that everybody can come along, um, not only the digital natives, but also the digital illiterate. 
and how can we make sure that there are no new gaps in our society in Europe? I think uh, I want to um, echo the words of member uh, Van Gruithuizen, who spoke about the Euronymous Academy for Data Science, which is a unique institution Thank in you. Europe, but also the Data Week Canal. Thank you. Member Eric Fliefholm, one minute. Thank you for the thank you to you, Commissioner Vester, for the great work. Thank you um, for the huge work. Um, we in uh, our Denmark region are very aware of the need for uh, support from the EU so that our, digital can, our region can make sure uh, that we can offer the digital services required. Um, we have uh, worked with providers uh, and um, digital service receivers, um, and that's very good. But we need also to recognise uh, the need for better solutions in, in the well-regulated sector. So we needed to ensure that we fully understand the legislation with regard to providers. Uh, we understand at the moment the importance to have uh, a high level of quality with regard to understanding legislation and we want a further dialogue around digitalization in Europe as this goes on. Thank you. Thank you. Member Altunia, one minute. Merci, Monsieur le Président, Madame la Vice-Présidente. La... Thank you, uh, President. Thank you, Vice President. The region that I uh, represent is aware of these issues, uh, digital issues, uh, both at uh, regional level and at uh, EU level, uh, including the importance of being competitive in uh, the technology, uh, digital technology and also in climate protection and other issues. And we need to uh, make investments uh, to ensure that we have uh, fast uh, data transfers. We need to uh, promote AI and encourage all uh, citizens, as has already been uh, said, to uh, reduce the digital divide. And uh, also, we need to make the digital sector more attractive, in particular for women. This is important uh, within the, our region uh, in France. That's what I'm particularly attached to. And we will uh, pay close attention to all of the developments uh, here. One of my colleagues spoke about cyber security. This is important to us too. Thank you. Member Dobromir Dobrev, one minute. Uh, President, uh, Mrs. Vestager, ladies and gentlemen, I'm eager to see what the results of the uh, digital sustainability will be. But uh, clearly it will show, they will show uh, the lack of uh, uh, coordination between the different levels, both in implementing the reforms and in designing uh, the changes. Investing in uh, digitaliza uh, digitalization is uh, going on piecemeal in the Bulgarian communities. Only half of the uh, centers are linked to the uh, central administration, which is key in order to uh, guarantee uh, secure uh, links with the Internet. The important thing is to have uh, mutually uh, linked uh, municipalities, and this, uh, uh, the lack of this brings about uh, fragmentation. And the, uh, only after the COVID crisis and the plans for uh, recovery and um, resilience, we set aside certain resources for the local, for the local authorities. This does not compensate for uh, lacks. Digitalization is very important for the health sector, and uh, the authorities have a very important responsibilities here. The Commission has put forward the proposals here, and that is something that we'll be looking at later. Um, there are three things I'd like to underline. For development, it's extremely important that... that recognition of the existing digital systems is taken into account so that investment already underway uh, is not cast aside. Secondly, um, sharing services across borders needs to take place in a secure manner where we take note of the importance of the considerations of patients and uh, healthcare providers. Thirdly, um, there is a huge potential in sharing data across border. Uh, that's true for research and treatment of uh, uh, patients. It can benefit patients, but it shouldn't serve industrial 
interests and the tech giants' conditions. We need to put patients and uh, providers' interests first uh, to serve the interests of communes. But overall, it's very positive uh, that we're moving towards greater sharing of data across border. It gives better possibility for treatment, research and innovation. Schausberger, one minute. Vice President, I don't need to emphasize the importance of the Commission making digitalization one of its main focuses. The many member states have state secretaries and departments for this that they've newly created. The regions are in competition with one another. You've already uh, spoken about this terrible war in Ukraine, and we uh, realize that digital technologies play a key role in war, either uh, from the point of view of cyber attacks, but also uh, for other reasons, such as uh, uh, transmitting information and disinformation. And beyond that, there's the fact that uh, Ukraine, uh, in this war, had already carried out uh, administrative digitalization right down to the local level, and digitalization has many advantages, as we can see, but it can be used for nefarious to nefarious ends. Um, during the corona period... We saw a huge increase in digital use. One further thing, digitalization needs to be continued to be offered to the citizenship, citizens, and we mustn't uh, forget the older people in this. Turk, you have the floor for one minute. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, it is... Undoubt, uh, undoubtable that uh, we are in the digital age. However, I must say that uh, we are still not sufficiently aware of the need to strengthen the digital resilience of the public administration and of critical infrastructure. We uh, see that uh, digital and cybernetic attacks have increased in frequency. Local infrastructure as well as digital infrastructure are not visible and uh, they are not paid enough attention to as long as they're working. Local authorities have limited resources and uh, they find it difficult to finance uh, the uh, necessary level of uh, protection for critical infrastructure. We uh, have no, not enough experts and we cannot employ them, we cannot hire them. We have to strengthen this resilience by establishing infrastructure at a national level and also by establishing uh, services for uh, security and uh, we must be able to hire the necessary experts. Thank you. Member Donatella Tese, you have the floor for one minute. Grazie, Presidente. Il prossimo decennio... Thank you. The next decade will no doubt see a significant digital transformation and we need to take stock of the need for the the regions and local authorities to act as hubs for this digital revolution. They will need to, to gear up to have stable structures within them over the medium to longer term. Taking forward the digital transformation seen as a process of necessary constant adaptation to square up to innovation and uh, very fast change, where digital infrastructure and cybersecurity are critical elements for the lives of citizens and the growth of businesses. In pursuit of this, the role of the, region, of the regions is particularly important, both in terms of proper data management and monitoring, but also interoperability and automatic exchanges of data, in other words, between the administration and private individuals. These are key elements in digital resilience which require special skills that it's hard to find locally. So the regions will have to, to play a subsidiary role here for the smaller entities within their areas so that they can make the most of synergy with European national and regional funds. The German speaker cuts the speaker off. You have the floor for one minute. Signor Presidente, gentile. Thank you, President Commissioner. 
In my capacity as the Committee of the Region's rapporteur on interoperability, I'd like to thank the Commission for this proposal, which takes stock of, of serious, serious concerns we've raised in the past regarding the need to involve local and regional authorities in the governance of interoperability. As a representative of Sardinia, allow me to say that this is a, a crucial issue. We will continue to monitor the involvement of the cities and regions, but above all, we will be careful to ensure that the costs of the digital transition are not all laid at the door of local authorities, and we will continue to call for support from national and European authorities. We're aware of the fact that most of the services offered to European citizens in our cities and regions have a cross-border element to them. Whether you're talking about offering um, automated parking services, um, sharing the numbers of beds available in, in uh, hospitals across the border, all these services have to be inter interoperable. That's why the contribution of the Committee of the Regions must be properly borne in mind by the other European institutions because we will be the, 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 in the front line when it comes to putting the new rules into practice. Member Marius Frankowski, you have the floor for one minute. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I will be speaking Polish. Uh, pandemia COVID-19 zdecydowanie przyspieszyła transformację cyfrową. Dodatkowo... The coronavirus has uh, sped up digital, the digital transformation at all levels of our administrations. We need to insist on, the, on putting interoperability in place. And at the moment, and what I'd like to do today is draw your attention uh, to the metaverse in our local politics. The data that we obtain at local level allow us to provide even better services for our citizens. We need to focus on accessibility to services and the role of services in the functioning of the community as a whole. We need to uh, be very aware of the dangers of uh, identity theft something we need to prevent. And we need to encourage use of digital tools. And I'd like to draw your attention to the possibility of benefiting from the universe. Final remarks, you have 10 minutes. The floor is yours. Well, uh, first and foremost, um, this has been a very uh, reassuring debate. Uh, I was quite certain that we were uh, on the right track to make the best use of digital technology to serve our citizens in the best possible way. With your interventions, I feel that this is guaranteed. Uh, because the intervention shows, I think, a very uh, comforting balance between the necessity of making technology safe and trusted and to make the most of the use of it. And I think that is the red, uh, threat uh, between the different uh, interventions. Uh, a few um, remarks uh, from the top. Um, what was said first uh, by uh, Makula on the uh, global sustainability goals in digital, that, that for us is absolutely crucial because the, the development goals, they're part of our compass. And it's not enough to say that digital is, is carbon neutral because you have sort of plugged in a windmill. No, you also need to work on lowering the energy use of the data centers and everything else we have. Because the energy produced by that windmills can be used for other purposes. And we need to make sure that digitization does not become or continue to be a climate problem in itself. And this is also why it's so important for, for Europe to invest in semiconductors, because as we can push more and more businesses to use semiconductors in their products and the most advanced nodes, then the energy use will go down. Uh, second, uh, I, I also uh, commend uh, the remarks uh, that it's important to crowd in uh, private sector funding. Uh, and I think there is a very important uh, mechanism at stake here. You all uh, represent uh, very strong customers. Uh, you uh, represent uh, entities, regions in Europe 
that has a strategic uh, approach to youth digitization. In Europe, we have been too shy to see the public sector as a driver uh, of innovation. Because when we start digitalizing public services, when we insist that they should be safe, when we want every citizen to take part, we are also part of shaping uh, how things uh, will be done. And that, of course, is very important in creating private sector responses to the needs that we have. I think the point uh, also by, by Thomas Schmidt uh, on, uh, on having uh, the raw materials uh, needed uh, is well taken. The thing is that when you look at the raw materials that goes into this, it's very important that Europe stays open, but also that we use many more of our own resources and that we make sure that everything digital is also fully recyclable and can be repaired. Uh, ages ago, the Commission made a, a, a study that showed that if everyone keeps their mobile phone for just another year, it would be the equivalent of taking a million cars off the streets. So there's a lot to be gained in circularity and in uh, things being able to be repaired. Uh, I think it's, it's really interesting to, to have sort of the approach uh, of, uh, of Conception uh, that one should be a pilot, one should test things, one should push the limit as to what has been done before, and one should indeed us push the limit as to how we see things. A, a valley of languages uh, to see how we can make uh, the many languages of Europe a real strength uh, for us in the language economy, uh, I think that is absolutely crucial. And the point made to say that digital uh, tools can enable us to prevent uh, depopulation of our regions, I think that is absolutely also a strategic uh, point. For that to happen, of course, we need uh, the infrastructure uh, to be in place. Uh, we're still not there uh, fully when it comes to infrastructure, neither on 5G, nor on fiber, nor on satellite connection for regions uh, where uh, broadband connectivity is not possible. And that ought to be a, a focus. Uh, Martin von uh, Grünhausen uh, said, I think, something uh, absolutely crucial, that digitization is Chefsache. And I think it illustrates a paradox. Because on the one hand side, digitization is about how we develop our society. A discussion that everyone here, of course, has an obvious interest uh, in participating in. At the, on the other hand side, I think everyone is a bit, ah, this is technical. This might be not secure. And I think it's really important that we bridge uh, that so that we make sure that this is not just driven by the technical solutions but that the fact that we have strategies, that we have policy goals, is part and parcel uh, of what we do. Because if we let technology drive it, we end up in a situation where it's not democracy that sets the rules, but that is decisions taken in boardrooms, where we have no access and where democracy is not the name of the game. And this is why the idea to have uh, chief uh, uh, technology development officers at all levels uh, of, of, uh, of how uh, we go about it is absolutely essential. So that someone who is absolutely next to decision makers has a responsibility, has the uh, access uh, to take uh, the necessary action. We are working uh, very hard on the uh, act on artificial intelligence. And here we are not trying to uh, regulate technology because as we speak, it will have developed. What we're trying to develop is how to control the use of technology. Uh, my guess is that in the coming years, uh, many of you will implement artificial intelligence uh, in the regions uh, where you have responsibility. Since there is a risk uh, that AI can discriminate, can like men more than women or majority over minority, uh, or people from one po postcode rather than people from another postcode, it's really important that people can trust uh, the way that artificial intelligence uh, is being used. And uh, uh, the proposal is, uh, is uh, taking its, its way, uh, but that leads me to a, a specific point uh, also raised about uh, who should enforce. Because yes, we now have legislation for a broader scope of sectors uh, to make sure that they implement cybersecurity measures. 
uh, we will soon have uh, artificial intelligence rules to make sure that when it's used, when someone is at risk of being discriminated, that these rules are in place. We have the Digital Markets Act to make sure that the market is open for smaller businesses actually to be successful. We have the Digital Services Act to make sure that, um, that we are not discriminated online if that is forbidden uh, where we live. But having legislation is one thing. Implementing it is another thing. And only when things are fully implemented can uh, people uh, living in, in regions and, uh, and, 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 and in other parts of, uh, of, uh, of our union be sure that things are actually in order. And this is why this uh, discussion is so important. Because without enforcement of our rules, people are left without the necessary protection, but also without the necessary uh, possibilities. Uh, and I would like to, to also say a few words about what was mentioned about that more women should be attracted to the digital sector. Uh, we have a completely untapped potential of women. Uh, as of today, I think 17%, 17% of ICT professionals are women. We would never accept that if that was a democratic assembly. And yet, we are talking about a sector that is to a very large degree shaping our future. So it's really important uh, to do more and also to sort of broaden the idea of what it is to work uh, with technology. Uh, I think within uh, the last five years, uh, the 10 jobs where there is most demand of skilled personnel, those 10 jobs, they didn't exist five years ago. So this is why the attraction to get people uh, to educate themselves, to make education available, uh, is absolutely uh, crucial. Um, I think the, the points made on, on health uh, data are, are sort of the crunch points uh, as to what should be discussed. Uh, how can we make sure that the uh, transfer and the use of health data is for the benefit of the citizen and our health systems? Of course, very often with companies as, as uh, intermediaries or those using the data, but not on their, um, for them to decide. Uh, but for those who own the data and for those who need to use the products coming from the data of having a fair say. Um, one of the things that um, uh, most of you have, have touched upon is indeed uh, security. Uh, and I think it's a fair point that we need to help each other out. Uh, until we reach a situation where we can recruit the people that we need, of course we need to help each other to get the right resources in order to secure uh, the networks, in order to secure the services, in order to secure the different solutions uh, that will be useful uh, in order for people uh, to be well served. Uh, we have an idea of, uh, of how to do that at a European level and of course more than happy to engage uh, also with you, with member states, with the uh, European level as to how we can make sure that we get the right access to cybersecurity uh, resources. Because without those resources, we will hamper the development. And, and maybe just uh, one point to, to finalize this. There is a war in Europe. There is an energy crisis. Uh, we have a climate crisis uh, to fight with. But what the climate crisis and digitization has in common is that it will happen no matter what we do. And we can choose to deal with it or we can choose to not deal with it. And if we choose to deal with it, we can also make the most of it. And one thing is, is a given, if we do not fight climate change, the livability of our planet will be seriously reduced. If we do not deal with technology, puts it in a democratic framework, make sure that it serves citizens, well, then the world will also be a very different place to live. Because then the risk is that we are all reduced to a data point and not to the human being, that we, how we would like to see ourselves. And... Um, Sometimes when I think about these sort of worst case scenarios, I will remember this uh, uh, debate and this conversation because I see that there is a willingness uh, which is completely integrated with the culture of this assembly to make sure that when we integrate technology in the solutions that we provide, we do it by putting people first. It has been a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much.
Madam Vice President, we are the ones who thank you for taking the time to be with us and to share with us uh, your views about the role of local and regional authorities in the digital age. It's uh, been an honor and a pleasure, and I look forward to continue the cooperation between the Committee of the Regions and the European Commission, and more precisely, your portfolio. Thank you so much. Thank you.